Well, thanks, thanks, Brett. This is a, this is a really great presentation. Thank you so much for putting everything together. Um, I, I had a question about um, uh, GCP and the, the notebook instances. Did they give you a cost estimate for running each one of those notebook instances before you run it, or do you get an idea how much it costs to run each one? Uh, that's a good question. Um, if you go into the VM creation tool, it will tell you how much an incident costs to run an hour, and so that's a good way to, to, to know that. Um, in general, I've had a lot of luck with using these T4 instances. It's a new GPU that came out last year, uh, but Google will charge you about 30 cents an hour to use one of those, and I think like uh, the virtual machine will be like, it'd be like 40 cents an hour altogether, which I think is pretty reasonable for if you're wanting to get started. Cool. Thank you. That's the question I had. Uh, there's some more questions in the chat. I just want to sure. check and see this um, Can you combine this with Node Express? Uh, yeah, basically you would add the, uh, the Google Cloud uh, AI libraries to your Node project and then say you can take images and then basically you would call out to a server, the answer would come back, and then you could add AI to your app pretty easily. Uh, the only thing to be aware of is, you know, some of these things, e each service has certain costs or whatever that you should be aware of. But yeah, that's, that's exactly how it works. Can you run PyTorch code on Google Code Lab? Uh, yes, uh, to, to, to Ivan. Uh, yes, you can run PyTorch code on Google Code Lab. Um, the way that you would do that basically is uh, sort of do like the command line. You would sort of do a pip install of PyTorch. Um, if you look around on the internet, people have like made pre-configured ones for Google Code Lab, but you very much can, uh, you know, uh, copy paste some Py, uh, Python, uh, you know, initialization code into Google Code Lab and, and make it work with different networks. Uh, Shaika uh, asked if it was a built-in network for detecting inappropriate pictures. Uh, Google has like a uh, AI service that will do that. Um, and then also people sometimes will build their own. But uh, I, would all, I would usually advise you to use an API or something like this to, uh, to get started, just so you can sort of proof of concept your code and make sure you understand you know, how it's all gonna work together before you start trying to do something custom. Uh, Manoman, uh, Manoman asks, yeah, does it come with an API endpoint that we can call with an off header API key? Yeah, that, that's exactly how it works. Uh, I didn't show you the spot, but yeah, you would have to set up your uh, API key so that then you would have access to service, and then by extension, they would know how, uh, where to send the bill to as well. Some more questions. Uh, any book? Um, do you, do you, uh, any book which you prefer? Is there a book on, I guess, introduction to machine learning, or is there a specific um, book? I've not. Uh, th there's some books. Uh, like there's a book on deep learning by Ian Goodfellow, which is pretty well known. Uh, but a lot of those books get pretty technical in a hurry, and so I, you know, it depends on if that's the style you like. But as for me personally, I've not had a lot of luck with that style. Uh, so I, I really like the internet videos. That that's that's more my approach, and so that's kind of like how I've done a lot of this stuff. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, there's a lot of these books out there. Uh, O'Reilly and then A Press as well have uh, many many different books on getting started with TensorFlow and uh, PyTorch as well. Uh, and then to even again, which do you think is better for a newbie, TensorFlow or PyTorch? Uh, I like both frameworks. I think it very much depends on like uh, what your style is. Uh, so I, w I would advise you like to sort of do like we'll say one one lesson from the deep learning AI thing and see if you like that style, and then do one lesson from the fast AI sequence and see if you know which which particular style you think is a, a good one to have. Uh, to Tanvesh ask if you should do the Google's ML crash course. Uh, the ML crash course 
is based around TensorFlow 1, um, but it's my understanding they're going to update it shortly. And then for TensorFlow 2, and I think whenever that comes out, I would definitely advise you to uh, check that out as well. Uh, and then Billy asks, what tangible applications do you see machine learning accomplishing in the near future? Uh, we've seen a lot of stuff with uh, computer vision. I think computer vision has been out for a while, but it's uh, uh, become very, uh, you know, it, we're able to run it on devices and in the field now. So I think computer vision is really big. And then I think NLP is really starting to come onto its own. And so I think that's the other thing that's going to be really big in the next few years. Um, and then Chris, do I recommend any certifications? Uh, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not big on certifications. I just like uh, messing around with things on my own, and uh, that, that's historically been my approach. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't have any uh, advice there. Uh, with that, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, and with that. Uh, Think we'll call it a day or <laughs> yeah any other questions anybody has before we uh end the meeting but well, what are my thoughts on tensorflow.js um yeah i think it's really cool to do all this stuff in the browser i think it's uh um it, it, this ability to to just run stuff on device i, I think it's a little wonky right now we'll say or they you know it, it, there's still some stuff to be figured out there but i think the idea of like you know, just adding machine learning to your random web app is certainly something that's really cool. I've done a few demos around it, and it's uh, going to be big, I think, pretty soon. Um, uh, yeah, I'm recording this. Uh, we'll, we'll put it on the Internet. Uh, yes, Evan, that is the uh, essay. I think I had it up here. Uh, this one right here by Rich Sutton. And uh, uh, for math topics, I think in general you should study some statistics. A lot of people don't study as much statistics as I think is good. You know, so just like learning some basic games uh, like craps or roulette and really understanding, you know, what each bet corresponds to and what the odds are of winning. And then I think linear algebra is always valuable to understand. I don't think you need to go full blown into like the uh, Jacobian forms and stuff like that, but I think like the basics of linear algebra and being able to multiply matrices are just a really good uh, trick to have in your toolbox as well. Uh, all right. Uh, with that, I think I'll call it a day. So uh, right. thank you all for thank your time. You so much. <laughs> We appreciate you in, in the presentation and answering all our questions. Thank you again yeah, for, you know, inviting us and uh, reaching out to Brett. Uh, it was definitely a fun time. Um, and again, Brett, thank you for presenting on this for all of us um, and everyone else for joining. Uh, super cool. Um, also, if you don't know Danny Thompson, he's the, the lead for uh, GDG Memphis. So you can go and check out his meetup group. He usually has some really good uh, talks very frequently. So highly recommend him. So anyway, uh, thanks again, everybody. It's nice to see you all.